Hi, I'm Mark Mustian. Welcome back to Furious Fiction. Here with Diane Roberts. We got a great show today. Ooh, We're going to be talking Southern story. fiction and yes. the very best Southern fiction. Indeed. We're so honored to have Ron Rash with us here. Ron, Ron, welcome to Furious Fiction. Hi, Ron. Hi, glad to be here. We're real glad that you're here with us. And I wanted to ask you, um, I really love your book, Serena, and I want you to talk a little about that title character. How did you, uh, how did you come to create such an impressive and terrifying woman? <laughs> she didn't resemble anybody you know in life. I <laughs> hope. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it was an act of imagination, fortunately. <laughs> uh, every novel I've written has begun with a single image, and uh, um, I. I was very aware of what had happened in Smoky Mountains because I actually, uh, where I teach here at Western Carolina, I'm only 15 miles from the Smoky Mountains Park. So I was very aware of that story, but uh, one afternoon I was driving on a, a little uh, backcountry road and an image came to me of a woman on horseback. Uh, uh, it was a silhouette in silhouette. Uh, she was on a ridge and there was something about her that just struck me as very intimidating, but at the same time, very uh, charismatic. Uh, the sun was coming up behind her, it was dawn, and uh, uh, it was glimmering on her blonde hair, so almost like a crown. Uh, she, uh, there was some ground fog beneath her, uh, the sun up, and it was almost as if she were in the clouds, uh, like a goddess. Gosh. Well, she, yeah. she's, uh, mm -hmm. I think she's one of the great kind of Characters and villainesses of uh, that uh, of fiction that I've read in a long time. I, I got to say also about Serena the book that uh, if there's any other book that features a trained eagle and a fight with a Komodo <laughs> dragon, I don't know of it. I mean that that's you know I, uh, that 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 that's uh, that, that that that's that's great. Yeah, there's a real strong streak of kind of environmental, I guess you'd say, consciousness running through a lot of your fiction. Uh, is that because of where you live or your background or what? Yeah, I think it's it's where I live. It's it's the fact of growing up in a rural area and 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 also realizing, uh, you know, that how quickly that can be lost. But uh, certainly, um, that's been a concern of mine all my life because I've loved to be, you know, to to be outdoors yeah. and uh, have been drawn to that. Well, tell us a little bit about, I, I like World Made Straight, too, and the whole oh, yeah. kind of uh, you know, Civil War and, and the you know, unresolved stuff. I mean, w did that resolve around an actual something, or how, how did you come to that book? I, I just, once again, kind of, that one I, I started off, uh, once again, with an image of uh, somebody looking at a trout on a small stream, uh, and, I, and I realized it was uh, Travis. But um, also, it, it's, it was one of those kind of moments when I was probably about his age, I was fishing a very isolated stream in the mountains, and I came across a marijuana patch. Um, I did the smart <laughs> thing. I, mean, I got a lot of That's what you're telling our viewers, anyway. Yeah, that's your well, story. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not in jail, so clearly yeah, that's, that's right. okay. Uh, well, do you, do you think of yourself as a Southern writer, an Appalachian writer, or what? Well, I... Uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm proud to be both of those to be in that uh, you know uh, in, in that company. Um, I, I do think that uh, the South is you know a, a region that there are many Souths, and I think the Appalachian South is very different from say the coastal Carolina South or the Florida South. Indeed. Uh, but but I do feel at the same time a sense of connectedness to to that tradition. Uh, right, you know, writers such as Flannery O'Connor. Uh, Faulkner have been very obviously very important to me. Well, in terms of, of, of what's next, Ron, I don't know if you can tell us. Is, is, do you have something else you're working on, and is it based in the South? Or, or I, 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 we've talked before about some mm -hmm. some some people are superstitious about even talking about that. But tell tell us what's next from Ron Rash. Well, I, I, I'm willing to talk about it because it's done. Good. Oh, good. Great. Yeah, uh, <laughs> otherwise, you, you're right. I would be very reluctant. Uh, always a little bit superstitious about that. But it's a it's a book called The Cove, and it will be out in April. Uh, and it's once again set in the North Carolina mountains. But it's on a it uh, a lot of what it's about is something that I just stumbled upon about five years ago. A, you know, a story that I found remarkable that I never realized, and that was that. Everyone knows in World War II there were Japanese internment camps, but during World War I there were German internment camps, and one of those camps 
was in the North Carolina mountains. And, and, and you know, these were not POWs. These were German citizens. Good wow. grief. That's it. That sounds great. Yeah. yeah you know, so uh, well, this, this new novel is about, you know, that, that is a big part of the novel. Well, we'll we're look forward to, uh, to seeing that uh, coming in the next few months then. We'll uh, get up with you again then. So, well, well th right. thanks. Th thanks so much for being with us. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Ron Rash, one of the great authors in America that today. That was great. As uh, the author of Serena and has a new novel, The Cove, coming soon. So I'm Mark Mustion here with Diane Roberts. Thanks for being with us again on Furious Fiction. See you next time.